Welcome back everybody. Today we're doing another whiteboard breakdown and we're gonna break down the summer to fall transitions and more importantly, we're gonna talk about where do you go in the fall when you wanna catch a musky casting and we're gonna start right now. Fall musky fishing on the shield can be really tough because you go from the height of summer when the fish are seemingly everywhere and all of a sudden as you start getting those first couple cold fronts in September, the fish just seem to disappear. But in a lot of cases in our experience, they don't really move that far. They just go from a broader area and then they go to what I would say like the spot within the spot. And this picture here behind me, we've already talked about this one in the spring to summer transition. If you guys haven't seen that video, I'm going to put link right here so you can watch that one. Come back to this video and it'll kind of sync up in order. But today we're talking all about the fall transition from summertime into fall. Our first example is a spot in the summer that we've already talked about in the other video. So this is an island and it's got a sandbar running off of it and heavy cabbage in the summer off of this sandbar, just a prime summertime spot. Now, if we transition into the fall, we don't see a lot of fish off of this sandbar because it has lake current and wind pushed through here. These weeds die off really early in the fall with those first couple cold fronts. So if I change the page over, this would be a continuation basically of this spot. We're just working our way up. So now here would be our prime fall spot. And I get two fish in October here. One comes up from this area here while I'm fishing with my wife. And the second one I'm fishing with David and Richard. And it comes down in here. And the difference here is that there's an island protecting it from the northwest wind. There's a small channel in here and these weeds in here stay very green and very lush well into October. Even into the latter part of October, we still see a lot of green weeds in here and it's holding the oxygen. It's holding that last little bit of heat in the year. So when we're looking for a spot in the fall to hold weeds, what we're looking for is wind protection for one. You want to have protection from the wind and you want to have preferably a little bit of lake current that's going to keep the weeds growing as well as they can. And here it's a sandbar area it's connected to a summer spot. And because these weeds hold well late into the year, always going to be muskies in here. And I have two clips here on two fish that I catch on the top line baits ripper. And both of them come from here. Let's go check out those clips. Nice, nice one. In there. Nice. Hey guys, Glenn McDonald, 54 bus. I'm out fishing with my daughter Kenzie and my wife Kyla. And I just got this bait last weekend from Adam at Top Line Baits. This is the new Ripper. I've been throwing it for a little bit. We've this is our third spot, I think, Kyla. And this one hit way out in the weeds, so let's have a look at it. Here he comes. Well, it's actually a little bit bigger than I thought. The next example is one that we've also talked about on one of our previous videos dealing with shallow rock structure. And here again, just to go over it quick, because I do think it's important because I did get this fish in October. Even though this area between mainland and mainland and a main lake current going through here, a shallow rock area, in the fall, fish are going to move to these shallower areas where we have some warmer water. And anytime you have a main lake break or neck down where you can funnel some water in and it has wind protection again, you could get areas of warmer water. So here, because of the shallow area in this channel we could see pockets of warmer water and then again with lake current coming through here we're going to have bait fish moving through and you're going to have muskies ambushing off of these points and because we have access to deep water 
that's a great spot for them to sit in the warmer water. And if they don't get a meal moving through, they can move out to deeper water and look for some ciscos or suckers that might be suspended in deeper water. But the key here is we're looking for that moving water and pockets of warmer water. There's one. Oh, fuck, he just turned off. He turned, you know, he, he turned, he's coming back. He, just, he went down. Work it slow. Yeah, get down there. He just went deep and turned and hung. He's still on you. Got him! Why in the fuck? <laughs> Our third example is another spot that is just an absolute classic summer spot. We have a gravel bar. We have weeds all the way around it with scattered boulders. We have basically a north or northwest wind pushing in here a lot. And in the summer, the muskies are going to be all through the outer edges of these weeds. And if we, if we have a really calm day, we would look deep inside the weed pockets for muskies that might be holding up. But as we transition into the fall period, again, we're looking for the best weeds that we have available. And we're looking for any warmer water pockets within that. So when you have a gravel bar and this one tops out at about one foot underwater lots of coarse gravel around it. It's going to draw a lot of heat from the sun. So we're going to see warmer water around that gravel bar. And as it works out to the sandbar, that sand again is going to hold the heat of the day. So any of the weeds around that sandbar are going to stay green later in the season. So on this particular day, Kyla and I were fishing from the top side and we are casting in. And because we are looking for these pockets of greener weeds, we're trying to cast right into the top of the sandbar or just catch the outer edge of the weeds. And because we know this spot pretty well, we know that on top of the sandbar, these weeds are going to be holding up pretty green and they're going to stay late into the year. We were here in mid-October and we had seen a couple fish around this area. And this was, our, I think, our second time through here. And I had the boat positioned up here, casting down into here. And I was able to pull a nice mid-40-inch fish off of the top of the sandbar but the key for us is looking for the best weeds available on any given spot and by this time of october a lot of the weeds on the south side that we would fish in the summer are already pretty much turned brown and dying off so we're looking for those the best pockets of weeds you can possibly find so we're back on probably one of our favorite spots on the lake we just got hit i lost it I kind of cast back and it hit again. Chaos Tackle, Medusa. That color works everywhere and it certainly worked here. It's not a huge one, but it's a pretty nice one just the same. Well, let's have a look at them. There we go. Long-legged, fairly clear musky. We're going to wrap up with one more spot here and this is a fish that Kyla caught. We actually we have footage of a fish that she lost on the spot and we come back the next day and she actually gets the fish. Not sure if it was the same one. It was a mid 40 inch fish but this is a huge rock bar out in the middle of the main lake and the rocks are actually just barely below the surface and on a low water year this outside edge actually breaks the surface. But what we're looking for here, as opposed to the weeds, we're looking for the shallowest spots that have wind protection. So again, any of that north or northwest wind coming from the top down across, we're going to look for fish sitting on that south side that might be against some of these rocks that are holding the heat from the day. And because again, we have deep water access all around here, if a fish is sitting in here and they don't get a meal up on the rocks, it's easy for them to roll out into the deep water and pick up some ciscos or suckers or whitefish that happen to be around this mid-lake reef. But in our example, we come across the bottom side and Kyla was casting up into the rocks and pretty much banging a crankbait. It was a new 
crankbait okay, off of the rocks and then pulling over the first break line, so into that six foot area. She pulls a fish off from right in this little inside corner area, which again is just key anytime you have those transition areas on a rock reef or a, a weed structure. Those are always key areas for fish to sit for ambush. Kyla pulls the fish off. She gets it to go in the figure eight. Actually gets off in the figure eight, and we talk about that in our figure eight mistake video. I'll put a link right here. We can actually go back and check that one out. But beyond that, we come back the next day, and because it was so windy, I wasn't able to put the tower cams up, but I do have some footage of her getting her fish out of the bag, and it was almost a carbon copy of the day before. The fish come off of this inside corner, come out, she got it boat side, we got it in the bag, and it ended up it kind of wrapping up our trip with six fish in two days up on Long Legged. Turned out really good for us, but because we are looking for those areas that would be holding any heat into the fall and just picking the best spot within that spot. Hey guys, Glenn and Kyla, 54 bust. Our last day at Long Legged, and Kyla got one on the noosh bait. I got this from my buddy Hunter. He said, break it in. Fall musky fishing on the Shield Lakes can be absolutely fantastic. It can be tough, it can be feast or famine. When you get on the fish and you get a pattern going, you can really put some awesome days together. If you can't get a pattern going, it can seem like the lake just dies off completely and you just can't find them. But again, going back to some of our other videos, if you just work your way from summer into the areas that are close to the summer holes, but with your best protection from the wind and any areas that you have rocks that are close to the surface or, or your last available weeds where you have warm water, look for those spots first and you're more often than not gonna find the muskies. And in one of our next videos, we're gonna start talking about where we go when we start trolling in late September or October. And check out the video right here for one of the really good days we had out trolling. And until next time, 54 Bust is out of here and we'll catch you guys out on the water later.